We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week is part three of building the Sonics tail kit. If you're familiar with the Zenith or Vans aircraft kit, this is a great way to compare and contrast how those kits go together. So without further ado, let's continue where we left off with part two with building the vertical and horizontal stabilizer of the Sonics tail kit. Now we can assemble the skeleton for our vertical stabilizer at this stage. Looking at page T08, we basically need just a few components. We need our main spar that we assembled previously, and we need the front spar, or the forward spar that we assembled previously, and then just a number of four ribs. This is T1001 all pre-drilled. T1002, slightly smaller, also pre-drilled. T03 and T04. And these four ribs are simply going to span between the forward and main spar. And we'll clicko them in place as we go. Very little drilling to do because many of the holes are already in place. So we will start at the bottom and install T1001. Now mine is marked with a forward sticker because it looks very symmetrical. However, because of the pre-drilled holes, something must be slightly different from the front to the rear. So I will respect the forward sticker. Now that is going to attach simply onto our clip down here and if you'll notice there are six holes and they line up with the six holes here so I'll go ahead and clico those together and then I'll go on to the second rib T1002 now this has a tab in front with three holes in it and that will attach very nicely to the three holes we have here and I'll clico that in place. Now after clicoing we can then drill up to the final size of the hole for the rivet and then T1003 also with oops here we go with the tab in front will go to the three holes right here and we'll continue all the way up. So I'll go ahead and start clicoing these and we'll take a look at what we have. And here we have three of the ribs clicoed on. First one is clicoed to the bottom clip and then the second one clicoed to the front and our third one also clicoed to the front. Now we can go ahead and drill these out to our final rivet size of 1 8 or size 30 drill bit and then re clico with a copper clico. I drilled out and clicoed the ribs to the forward spar. Now we can line up the main spar with the other side of the ribs. This will attach on top of our clip with six holes. Here we'll line this up and clico this with the three holes and the three holes up here. So I'll clico these together and then drill out to final rivet size of the 1 8 inch or number 30 drill bit. We may have to remove either this or here in order to get our drill up in there to be able to drill it properly. And once that's drilled out, then we'll take these all apart and deburr them and then reassemble and rivet. 
With everything drilled out to final rivet size, I'm going to disassemble, deburr all of the holes and all of the components, reassemble and rivet. The size of the rivets are spelled out in the plans and the direction you are to set them is also in the plans. And here we have it all riveted together. We can add the top rib up here. I'll turn this around. And right up here, we'll add T1004. Now it has three holes drilled back here, but nothing here. And note where this will be located. The three holes will match up with the three holes here. And I'll clico this in place. We used a clamp to hold things tight and then going to drill with the number 40. So all three were drilled out to the 1 8 or size 30 and riveted. The other end we're just leaving as pilot holes at this time. Now we're going to put on the tip rib right here and that was with T1005 and there are four holes and those will match up with the four holes on our clip and we'll click on this and drill to rivet size and then rivet. So the holes were drilled out to their final size of 1 8 and I took it apart, deburred both pieces and then reassembled, click out and riveted. Here we have the vertical stabilizer skin. It is pre-bent and more importantly pre-drilled. Uh, there's lots of holes already located in the skin along the edges and where the spar and ribs are located and that's going to make our job very easy installing this. So I'm going to put this down on the table flat and simply insert the skeleton and we have the top up here. And the edges of the holes in the spar line up nicely with the holes in the skin. And that way we can line it up. Now what we're going to end up doing is folding over the skin and clicking through our pilot holes. And it's helpful if you have someone uh, help hold the skin. We don't want to kink the skin, so we just want to be somewhat careful. And I will begin to add the silver clicos into the holes, about every third hole or so. And then when we get a few in here, we'll turn it around and catch the other side. So I filled about every third hole or so with Clicos. Now we want to turn this over, but we don't want to rest on the tips of the Clicos on the table. That would not be good. So I've left an area in here, kind of a channel without Clicos, and an area here without Clicos because I'm going to put down two supports on the table and run the supports in these area so that the top of the Clicos do not rest on the table, but rather rest on the surface. So I'll set that up right now. Now these are the supports I'm going to use. These are just square metal tubes. You can use lumber or anything that's nice and straight. 
and is deep enough, about two inches, to be able to clear the Clico so the Clico doesn't touch the table. I've turned the stabilizer over and placed it on top of my supports. Again, anything that's at least two inches tall and allows the Clicos to not touch the table underneath will do just fine. Because our next step then is to get a helper to push this over and allow us to continue Clicoing on the other side here. And also the nose rib does not have any holes in it so we're going to end up drilling those holes. The holes are only in the ribs and the spar as we can easily see. You can accomplish this yourself by using a stick or other object to help hold it down tight while you locate the holes and insert the clecos. But it's always helpful to have a helper but if no one will help you, it can be done if you're careful. And then you can think about why you don't have any helpers. And with enough Clicos, it will hold itself and you can continue. And here we have the Clicos installed. I'll add a few more. Another thing to point out is to make sure you have reinstalled the hinge if you removed it earlier. Our next task is to drill out all of the holes to their final rivet size, which will be 1 8 or size 30 drill bit. And as we drill them out to the larger final size, we'll put in our copper colored Clicos. So we'll keep this Clico as we drill until we have all the holes drilled to their final size. Now, there's a couple of exceptions, mainly up here at the top. We need to drill these holes out to just the size 40 as they are in the skin. The rib behind it is not drilled out, so we need to drill them out not to the size of 1 8 but to their pilot size of the 3 30 seconds or number 40. And then this hole here, as marked on our plants, does not get drilled out to the final size, but we leave it as is. So we need to continue drilling those. And then also at the very front, at the bottom, and we'll get a better view from the other angle. And this is at the front of the stabilizer. These holes need to be drilled out into the rib behind it and then also drilled out to their final size. When drilling out the rib underneath here through these holes, we want to make sure that the rib flange is centered. In other words, you can grab and pull this up and down ever so slightly. You want to make sure that as you look through the holes, you're hitting the center of the flange so that you're not drilling too high or too low. Once you get one of them drilled in properly, then of course it will hold 
the rib solid and you can drill the rest. With everything drilled out to the final rivet size, we can now rotate this and attack the other side in a similar fashion. Being careful to place the stabilizer on its supports. Now we're going to turn it over and do the other side and rearrange our supports so that we're not working on it on top of the Clecos. So we'll go ahead now and drill out to final rivet size of a number 30 drill bit and fill in with copper colored Clecos until we have it all drilled out. Here's a look inside the flange of the nose rib. Notice how we want to make sure we get into the center of the flange. We have completed drilling all of the holes out to their final size. Do note that at the very top we left those holes alone. We did not drill them out. Our next step is to carefully remove all of the Clecos. Remember the skin will kind of snap back when we remove all the Clecos from one side. And we then want to take the skin off and deburr it both sides, the edges, the holes, and the same with the skeleton where we drilled. And then we can reassemble. We have it reassembled after all of the deburring, so we're going to start riveting. Uh, typically we like to rivet from the center of the metal towards the open edge. So I'm going to rivet this line here first and then work our rivets outwards towards the edge and then catch the edge. Now we should drill the tip or the top rib with our number 40 drill bit. And we're not going to drill it out or rivet at this time. We're just going to leave the holes at the number 40 size and Clico. Now we can turn it over and do the other side. We won't need our supports anymore. We can simply use a nice clean table to lay it up. And here is our vertical stabilizer skinned on both sides. Hinge lined up, we'll slip the pin in from the bottom 
you get to the top. Now we'll take a look at the very top where we're going to install the tip and see how our alignment looks up there. Here we have our tail tip rib and that will be attached here. Notice the offset to raise it just a little bit higher because it looks like we're just about even at the top. So this will be attached three pre-drilled holes here we'll use as guide for this. This will get attached here and then eventually our fiberglass tip will use these holes going on the inside of the skin and then over the flange. We're going to start with the main spar fitting and that's T0302. It's this heavy aluminum piece with the flange on one end. And we're going to start out by making a set of lines for mounting some brackets. By looking at our plans we see that these lines need to be 7 eighths of an inch from the center of the hole outward. 7 eighths of an inch and we can confirm that with another measurement on the plans showing four and a half inches from one line to the other. So we're going to carefully set those up and then we're going to go get the brackets T0, O3, O3. Now these have holes drilled on one side. We're going to be dealing with the side that does not have any holes on them. And if we look carefully, there's also an interesting bend. It's going to end up going like this. If you notice, it's not a 90 degree bend. It's a bend that has a little bit of an angle in it. And if we put a straight edge on this, we get the a projected line, which is a little further away from the corner. That's a little easier to see and it's that projected edge that we want to line up on this line. It's going to, one of them is going to go like this. So the projected edge touches the line. That's why you'll see a little bit of a gap in between there. And same with the other one. Go like this. Now using your plans you'll see that we need to place the edge 1 16th of an inch from this edge and then use our line to line up with the projected edge there. I'm going to go ahead and clamp these in place and then if you notice underneath them are a set of six holes and we'll use those holes to back drill into the piece and then Clico. Next we have the channel T0304 has a bent end on it. It's all pre-drilled along the flanges and an open end over here. Now this is going to fit onto our main spar. Now here's the center and I'm going to turn it over. And the center is located right here. We're simply going to take 04, the 04 channel, and lay it on top so all the holes match up very nicely. I'm simply going to lay it on top and Clico. You really can't get it wrong. And here we have it clecoed in place. Here's our center of the main spar. And all the holes match up along the way between the main spar and the channel. And the main spar comes to an end right before three holes 
where our rib is going to go later on. We basically repeat by adding another channel like this to the other side of the main spar. Our goal then after adding these is to drill through all of the pre-drilled holes and then enlarge them to final rivet size of 1 8 or number 30 drill bit and that would include our angles on here also drilling them up to the 1 8 size and clecoing. Here we have the main spar all clecoed together and all the holes drilled out to the final rivet size of 1 8 or number 30. We can now disassemble and deburr all of the components and then reassemble for riveting. And here we have it riveted. Notice the direction of the rivet heads. They were all set from this side. And the plans show us one location where they don't want a rivet set at this time. And then notice there are longer rivets used in this piece as compared to the other ones because of the additional thickness and all of the rivets are designated on the plans as far as which ones to use. There are only two sizes used in this structure. To assemble the forward spar we have the spar fitting which is this relatively thick extruded piece with the two bends in it and pre-drilled with lots of holes and then we have a spar channel and plenty of holes that match up with our spar fitting there'll be one of these for the left and for the right side and then two clips, one that will go in front, and this one is all pre-drilled, easy to attach, and one for the other side, also pre-drilled. So it's relatively simple. We're going to take our spar fitting, and on the fork out here, we're going to attach the channel. And the holes match up just nice, so I'll go ahead and click on this in place. And then right at the corner here, we will put our clip and attach that. And there we have the channel clico to the fitting. And in the corner here, we have the clip, the large clip, attached on the face of the channel. Now this leaves one more component and that's for the rear clip and this will simply go on the back side right here and I'll clico that in place with the three pre-drilled holes. And there's our rear clip clicoed in place, three holes and our completed assembly. Now we just need to repeat for the other side and we'll be all set. Here's the forward spar now all clecoed together. Now we can drill this out to the final size for the rivets and then take it apart and deburr all the components and then reassemble and clico for riveting.
see Gosset, but Goldman Sachs is unmasked. That's what has never worked there. That's all. Okay. To support it, the future of criminals on the page. To critics, it's a potential haven for criminals. Now the red We have finished the forward spar. Note that the rivets were pulled from this side. Also note that this area right here, we left the rivets off as per our plans. And at the clip here, we look at the other side, note that these rivets were pulled from this side just for these three. We're going to assemble our horizontal stabilizer. We have the forward spar in place here. The side with the flange will go down. And we have the main spar. We have our flange here that'll go down towards the table with our brackets inboard. And by lining these up approximately in this location, we can now lay out the ribs and this will be symmetrical on both the left and the right side. We could start for example with T0401. This is our root rib and everything is pre-drilled, all of the holes here and they will match the brackets on the main spar and the forward spar and we can click this in place just like this. And of course we can do the very same to the other side. Now these ribs are almost the same from front to rear except the front has two holes very close to each other at the front whereas the back end does not. So we want to make sure we don't flip these around the other way, otherwise our skin won't match up with it. These are the two holes here. And now we can continue with the next set of ribs going outwards from the center. We have T0402 and this is identified at the front with this bent angle here. And the holes in the front will match up very nicely with the holes in the spar. And we'll go ahead and click go. We have T0403, again at the front, the bent angle, and at the back, straight, and the holes match up with the holes in the spar, so you really cannot get these wrong, and we'll click all that in place on both sides. And then the final inner rib which is T0404, same thing, the front's identified with the bent edge and the pre-drilled holes go right in. Set that up for both sides. Last are the tip ribs. Got the straight nose on it. Now do note that three of the holes are pre-drilled, but no holes here. So as we take this down, we'll match up the holes in the flange, and then the holes are drilled in the forward spar, and we'll use those holes to locate and drill into the rib. So I'll click all this in place on both sides.
And that leaves us with the leading edge rib, TO406. And these are pre-drilled with four holes. And they go and notice that our tabs are pre-drilled which makes it very easy. They will click on place here and here. Looking at the very end at our tip rib, these will be the only holes that we will have to drill from the flange of the main spar into the tip rib. All of the other holes for our rib to spar connections were already pre-drilled and that will allow us to quickly open them up to the final size for our rivets drill number size 30 or 1 8 inch and we'll go ahead then and do that and then take them apart, deburr and reassemble all with our copper colored Clecos prior to riveting so this was very easy to put together because all of the holes were matched and all we really had to do was open up the holes to the final rivet size. For drilling the end rib in these three holes here, one of the easiest ways to do it is with one of the long drill bits. This will allow me to get in there. and I can continue drilling the holes from the inside with this long drill bit of course click in before I drill and then I can drill from the outside with my standard number 30 drill bit this one's a number 40 just going through the pilot hole gives a lot of flexibility by having a long bit like this Another option is to use a right angle drill. This has a threaded drill bit, in this case a size 30, threads into this device and it attaches to your regular drill. Just another method that allows you to get into tight locations for drilling. With all of the holes drilled out to final rivet size, we can now disassemble and deburr all of the parts. And then we will reassemble and rivet.